to be with uh, all of you once again this evening. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's good to uh, be able to come together, uh, even by social media, even by the way we're coming together, and, and open up God's Word and study. Uh, but we do, uh, we do, as we continue to say every week, you are truly missed. And uh, we, uh, we do look forward to the day whenever... Uh, we can uh, worship together collectively once again. But uh, uh, with that being said, we uh, do want to uh, continue to remind you to support your local ministries here around Clayton and, and, and locally in the county. Uh, support those places that are local. Uh, um, it's tough for everybody right now, uh, but if you're able to support them, please do. Uh, don't forget about our blessing box here in the parking lot, uh, CAM. Um, and don't forget, um, don't forget about your church. Um, we do again. We continue to say thank you to those of you that uh, are faithful to the church, and uh, for any that would like to uh, contribute or give uh, tithes and offerings. Uh, the address is uh, 312 John Street, Clayton, NC 27520. Uh, but we do thank you, and we look forward to seeing you uh, really, so really soon. Um, there are many prayer requests, and um, we're going to spend just a second before we go into prayer and ask a blessing upon the, the, the bread that we're going to break this evening. Uh, but um, continue to remember Alan Pooley and his family, uh, of course, Miss Mildred Bailey and all of her family, uh, Mr. Sidney Britt and all of his family, and then we have a long list. We have people that were shut in before this started. Uh, let me encourage the folks of ECC to uh, continue to call and check up on people. Um, it's, uh, it does them good. I know my family appreciates it from time to time when we get calls from uh, our church family. Uh, but we do, uh, we do encourage you to call and check on one another. Uh, but at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to open up the Word of God. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this time that we have that we can gather in these means with which we can gather together. And Lord, we pray your blessings to be upon the reading and expounding of your holy word. And Lord, we just pray that you would just be in the midst of every word that is spoken. And Lord, not my words, but your words. And Lord, may every heart that hears uh, receive the blessing that you intend. And Lord, uh, we just ask for your guidance and your leadership um, in these days. And Lord, we ask your blessings to be upon uh, all of those that are sick and suffering today. Lord, we have mentioned names, uh, Brother Allen and Brother Sidney and Sister Mildred, and uh, the list goes on. Um, Lord, no way to, to call them all today or this evening, but Lord, we, we know that you know each and every one of them, Lord. I pray that you would search the hearts of those that are hearing and listening this evening and touch the needs of the ones that are upon those hearts. And Lord, we're going to give you the praise, honor, and glory, Lord, for we know you're still on the throne. We know you are still the master physician. And Lord, this cannot last. It has to end that we might, uh, that we might come back as your church and your family uh, to uh, worship you. Uh, collectively once again. Lord, we pray for our churches. We pray for all the churches, all the pastors. We pray for the leaders of this nation. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our state and our communities. And Lord, we just pray for the doctors and nurses and all of those that are dealing uh, with this sickness and those in the nursing homes. And Lord, just so many upon our hearts. Now lead us, guide us, and direct us. We ask your blessings upon the reading and expounding of your word. And may you receive all the glory. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. So tonight, um, we're going to be in the book of Daniel. So go ahead and open your scriptures to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. And um, the, the Lord led me to Daniel uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, and these particular verses of scripture. Uh, because, you know, there is a, um, we've been talking about witnessing and we've been talking about it's a, a great time now to to be sharing Jesus with with the world and with those around us uh, you're going to find at times there are more people that are willing to hear and receive there are more that are willing to listen 
but we're not we're not we're not called by God to 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 reap every harvest. We're called by God to sow seeds. Uh, so keep sowing the seeds. Keep uh, planting those seeds of the gospel wherever you go and whatever you do. But I wanted to I come to Daniel because Daniel is a the book of Daniel. The first six chapters or so uh, are a great testament to being strong in your faith. And you see, and the thing that that the world sees of us the most these days is our faith. They see how we react to what's going on. They see how we conduct ourselves in the midst of the trials and the tribulations. In the midst of all the storms, they, they see how we as Christians, and you say, well, there's nobody paying attention to me. Well, you're wrong. There's always somebody watching. There's always somebody that's paying attention to what's going on around them and who's around them. And what's being said. So as we look into these verses tonight, we're gonna we're gonna look at verses one through nine in chapter six of Daniel, and we're gonna look at uh, Daniel's uh, ministry of his witness. And the thing is, is that can we model our witness to Daniel? Can we be the type of witness that Daniel was? That's the question. Let's look at the Word of God. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these, over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the, pre the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the pre presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could, not, they, they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, Neither was there any error or fault found in him. This said the, then said these men, we shall, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and the, gov the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have counseled together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast in the den of lions." Now, O king, establish this decree and sign the writing that, that, it may, that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and, per Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. We see here, starting in verse 1, we see, we see Daniel um, being preferred. You see, the thing about the Medes and the Persians was Daniel was not one of them. Daniel was a Hebrew child. He was a Hebrew boy. He was, he was not of the Medes and the Persians. He didn't even have their beliefs. But he was in Babylon when Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians. And, and, and you know, the thing about it is, is that there are going to be times uh, in our life that, that our attitude... And the way we conduct ourselves will pay off. So as Christians, how do we con conduct ourselves? How do we act? What is our attitude? Because you see, Daniel's attitude in these first couple of verses is proved that, that, that he had an attitude of, a, of God, his God. His faith shone through. It pleased the king. It pleased him 
uh, to set over the kingdom 120 princes. But what made him even more pleased was the fact that of the three presidents, Daniel was first. And you notice the fact that, 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 that it was all because in these verses that Daniel, Daniel worshipped God and they could see it in him. So I ask you today, does the world around you see Christ in you? Does the world around you today see how you conduct yourselves? I'll give you an illustration of, 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 of what goes on. I had somebody that was telling me long, long ago, just a few days ago, uh, about a person who was at a at their child's soccer game, and this is a person that, that teaches Sunday school at church and is active in their church, and yet they were throwing a fit and, and, kept, and carrying on. This is an adult that's carrying on to the point that the referee stopped the game to eject the parent. Now let me ask you a question. Is that showing Christ? Is that a Christ-likeness? I mean, is that, is that how we are supposed to be perceived? I'm going to say no, because you see, with everything that Daniel had going on in his life, Daniel was a slave in, in Babylon. He had no rights, but yet God was elevating him because of his faith, because he was faithful to God. God was watching over him. You see, the thing that we need to remember is, is that, that, that if we're going to say we are Christians, then that's what our faith and our life need to portray, that Christ-likeness. You see, I, I kept going back to the verses of Scripture in Philippians. Philippians 1.27, uh, the Apostle Paul says to the church of Philippi, Philippi only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. The Apostle Paul says, says you're supposed to be faithful unto Christ, and everything that you say, Church of Philippi, everything that you do is supposed to reflect Christ. So wherever I am, that's what I should be hearing. Wherever we are, that's what should be seen. You see, there's no excuse. There's no excuse at all. Because you see, I continue to say, and the folks at Everett Chapel have heard me say it before, it's not your witness that you're harming. It's the one you say that you believe in. It's Christ who you're harming. You're harming his testimony and his witness through you. And so uh, the Apostle Paul says, Let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. You're supposed to be stand fast in one spirit, one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's what we're supposed to be. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Here in the book of Daniel, Daniel was being steadfast in his faith. He was holding on to his God. We see that in chapter 1 right off the go. You see whenever they were first brought in to Babylon that Daniel made a stand. You saw that the other three Hebrew children with their Babylonian names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood steadfast. They stood steadfast in their faith. So you find in the book of Daniel how to stand fast in your faith and to be a strong witness. You see, it pleased the king because verse 3 tells us that it was Daniel's excellent spirit. It was the spirit that was in, within him. It was that spirit in him. It was that love for his God. It was that love for Jehovah 
that gave him such a great and grand witness. Now, do we love Christ that much? Because what I can say is that whenever we do things and say things out in public, out where people hear us, when we do things that do not reflect kindly on Christ, we, we're not being strong and we're not being steadfast in our faith. I know there's somebody that's going to say, well, preacher, that's just who I am. My flesh gets in the way every now and then, but I ask for forgiveness. But Scripture tells us that if we walk in the Spirit, we fulfill not the things of the flesh. So I'm just saying as, as, a, as a minister, as a man of God, that we need a closer walk with Jesus, and then we don't have to worry about the flesh overcoming. We don't have to worry about the flesh being dominant in our life. That's just an excuse to act bad. That's all that is. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but it's just an excuse for us to act bad. Well, preacher, I just, I've heard it said. I, I, preacher, I just, I, I just, people need to know where I stand. Okay, again, an excuse to act bad. Daniel was being uh, elevated because of a right spirit, because of how he walked and how he talked and the way he conducted his life. It was because of his witness. It was because he was not ashamed of the gospel. He wasn't ashamed of his God. He wasn't ashamed of his faith. He lived his faith every day for, for even King Darius to see. And you see, and the thing is, is that um, that's what is expected of us. We're expected to live our faith before men every day. He had that excellent spirit and the king thought to set him over the whole realm, over the whole kingdom, over everybody, over ev Here again, you see God putting his man in second place in a kingdom that was wicked and evil. You go back and look at the life of Joseph. There was nobody above Joseph but Pharaoh. He didn't get there on Joseph's accord. He got there on God's, by God's righteousness, by God's reward is how he got there. But he got there for a purpose. I'm telling you today that Daniel was elevated. He was elevated because he was faithful. And you see what happens is a lot of times, even in our workplaces, brothers and sisters, in the world we live in every day, even in our workplaces, we can get ridiculed, we can get persecuted, we can get, we can get put down by, for our faith. But even when Daniel was being ridiculed and persecuted for his faith, he still stays strong in his faith. He stood on his faith. Because you see, the one thing that I always remember is that I will answer to nobody but God. But one day I will answer to him. And what I will answer to him for is how I live my life. How I live my life. You'll answer for the same thing. What kind of a testimony did you have? What kind of a witness were you? And King Darius Wanted to put him over all the all the realm of the, the over the whole kingdom, right under himself, and 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 this brings a part in verse four. It brings on the attack because you see you can't. Uh, well, I like to think of it like this: Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. The world don't like who's in me. The world doesn't like who's in you if you know Jesus. The world doesn't like it, so the attack will come. But stand strong and stand fast. Be not ashamed of the gospel. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God 
unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see, he said, don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You're supposed to live your life for Christ, not for the world. You're supposed to live your life, brothers and sisters, satisfying God, making God happy and pleased with you, not the world. The world will never be happy and pleased. <laughs> you can go ahead. You can try all you want to to make them happy and please them. You're not going to. It's not going to happen. But you can please God by living a right life, by having a strong testimony. He, Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 16, Yet if any man suffer as, as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in the, on this behalf. Let him glorify God. James tells us to take joy in all diver tribulation or temptation. Take joy in it. You see, the thing is, is that the attacks would come. The presidents and the princes, they sought uh, the fine occasion against Daniel and concerning the kingdom, and they couldn't because there was no fault, there was no blame in him. But that's the way, as Christians, we're supposed to be found. We're supposed to be found blameless. That the world can't hold anything against us. That our neighbor can't say anything bad about us. I mean, you think about it. What would it be like if the only thing that the world could come up against uh, about you and against you was that you were too nice? <laughs> Imagine that one, right? Or maybe they had a problem with the fact that you helped your neighbors too much. Or maybe they didn't like the fact that in the middle of a pandemic you had a smile on your face and joy in your heart. Imagine that, right? The world's going to find fault, but we're supposed to be happy in Christ. We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be as Daniel is and was in these verses of Scripture. We're supposed to be faithful no matter what. No matter what. And so they couldn't find fault with him on, on behalf of the kingdom. He wasn't doing anything wrong in his ruling of Darius' kingdom, so they said we can get him on his God concerning the law of his God because the one thing that they knew about Daniel was Daniel was not going to fail to have time with his God. Hmm. Maybe there's the place that the world should find fault with us is that we're going to spend time with our God whether the world likes it or not. We're going to spend time with the one who died for us whether the world likes it or not. We're going to share him with as many people that will listen whether the world likes it or not. I'm not here to please the world. I'm not here for the world to be happy with me. I'm here to tell the world that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what I'm here for. Not to make the world happy. Are you here to make the world happy? Are you trying to please the world? You see, the thing is, is that Daniel's focus was on his God and he didn't have to worry about pleasing the world because the world was coming to Daniel. He didn't have to worry about pleasing Darius because Darius was coming to Daniel. Not because of Daniel, because of God. And so they sought to go after him over the law of his God. And so they go to the king and have the king to write a decree. Hmm. For 30 days, O king, nobody can bow their knee and worship any god except you, O king. Huh. The world, 
that we live in today is changing. We as Christians, as believers in the gospel, we need to be paying attention to what's going on around us. Because, you see, for so many years, we have said in this country, in our, ir in our arrogance and our ignorance, it can't happen here. And things that go on around the world can't happen here in America. You better pay attention to what's happening. Because it can. It can. I truly believe that we're on the verge of a great awakening. And the Christians, the believers in this world, need to be standing fast on their faith. They need to be rock solid in their relationship with Jesus Christ. They need to be rock solid in it and prayed up, preparing for the great awakening because I believe the revival is coming. I know it's coming. God is opening it up. Will the church stand up and be faithful? Will the church stand fast in its faith? Will the believers of Jesus Christ Will they stand as Daniel stood? Only bowing to pray to their God. Only bowing before their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I heard a preacher say, every man, including Satan himself, every fallen angel, every one's knee shall bow. You can bow your knee now before Jesus and repent of your sins or you can wait and bow your knee later in judgment. And that's hard. But it's not. You don't have to be. There's a great awakening coming. There's, there's standing on the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. You see, King Darius wrote the decree, and next week we'll look into what transpired. If you've studied your Bible, you know what happened. But at the same time, what I want to know from you, what does your life say? What is the witness that you pre present each and every day wherever you go? Are you a good witness for Jesus? Are you a not so good witness for Jesus? Are you not a witness at all for Jesus? We need to be the best witness that we can be. So when the revival starts, oh, we can celebrate. We can celebrate. What is your witness? Do you be quiet? Are you quiet when people tell you to be quiet? When it comes to Jesus? Or do you keep sharing the gospel? Let's keep sharing the gospel, brothers and sisters. It's important that we do. Look, he's coming. He's coming again and he's coming soon. Don't you want to see him? I want to be out on the first trumpet sound. Amen. How about you? So good to be with you this evening. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the study. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, I pray that our conversation, wherever we go and whatever we do, that our conversation is becoming of the gospel of Christ. As the Apostle Paul so put it. Lord, that wherever we go, you may see a testimony of Jesus. Whatever we say, you may hear the words of Christ. Lord, may as we open our mouths, may Christ be upon our tongue. And may his holy name, may his holy name, a name that is so sweet, may his name be upon our tongues. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Lord, you see the hearts. You see the ones that have tuned in this evening. Lord, I pray, 
Lord, that you would just use it in a mighty way. This is not about me. It's not about anyone else. It's all about Jesus. May our witness be strong. And Lord, may we stand fast in our faith. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And we're going to give you the praise, honor, and glory. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good to see you. God bless you. We still miss you, love you, and look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.